Good morning. If you've tuned in, we're checking a new camera or using a different camera and checking the sound quality. So please be patient. We'll start mass in a short while. How are we doing with the sound check? I'm just waiting for it to come oh. on my phone. Oh, okay. So we're testing things. So please be patient. Testing. One, two, three, testing. That's interesting. Did it revert to one of the pages? Testing. We're just testing a, new, a different camera and a different sound check. So it looks, are we getting everything going through? Uh, testing, one, two, testing. All right. We'll start in a few seconds. My friends, let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. We gather this morning, uh, I mentioned some of you who tuned in early, we're trying a new camera this morning with a new microphone uh, arrangement. So please do comment if the quality is better or if there's an issue, and we can try to address it uh, between today and tomorrow. We continue in this time, this time of confinement, this time of restriction, and we realize that one of the things that can happen is that we get frustrated and we get angry and we lash out. We lash out at those closest to us, those for, with whom we're having cabin fever. But we also, like a, group, like a family that mourns a loved one, we lash out at God. We don't see what he is doing for us, what he tries to offer us, how he is present to us. Let us try to overcome. Let us try to find that inner peace and hope. Let us set aside how quickly we resort to anger, to worry, to angst, and try to trust in the Lord's strength, trust in the Lord's promise of forgiveness of sin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. 
Almighty and eternal God, our refuge in every age, to whom we turn in our distress, in faith we pray, look with compassion on the afflicted, grant eternal rest to the dead, comfort to mourners, healing to the sick, peace to the dying, strength to health care workers, wisdom to our leaders, and the courage to reach out to all in love, so that together we may give glory to your holy name through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be tracked, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me, like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my In distress, distress, I, I called, called upon, upon the Lord, Lord, and he heard my voice. I love you, O Lord, my strength, O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. In, In my, my distress, distress, I called upon the Lord, and, and he heard my voice. voice. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. In my, In my distress, distress, I called, called upon, upon the Lord, Lord and, and he heard my voice. The breakers of death surged round about me. The destroying floods overwhelmed me. The cords of the netherworld enmeshed me. The snares of death overtook me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews picked up rocks to stone Jesus. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of these are you trying to stone me? The Jews answered him, We are not stoning you for a good work, but for blasphemy. You, a man, are making yourself God. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If it calls them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, can you say that the one whom the Father has consecrated and sent into the world blasphemes because I said I am the Son of God? If I do not perform my Father's works, do not believe me. But if I perform them, even if you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may realize and understand that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. Then they tried again to arrest him, but he escaped from their power. He went back across the Jordan to the place where John first baptized, and there he remained. Many came to him and said, John performed, performed no sign, but everything John said about this man was true. And many there began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's a classic archetype in literature, that idea of prince and the pauper, or, you know, kind of the, the, the 
you know, someone imp important and powerful going undercover and lead, you know, just living among the people. It's often a comedy or at least something humorous that flows from it. And they're caught in this dilemma of beginning to learn what people really think of them or think of their family, their father, their king, whatever, and wanting to defend it and thereby risking the friendships that are developing. And yet, when it becomes unveiled at the end, the climax of the story, all of these things that, uh, all of these good things come together and work, this great insight. The modern version, I, I've never watched it, but you know, undercover boss, I guess, is the, the notion in the world today. Well, in a way, the Lord is doing the same thing. Now, it's terribly oversimplified, almost crassly so, but the Lord is coming among us, and he's offering us, and yet what he offers is still something that sh shakes people up, because then he unveils the truth. So not only is he powerful and purposeful in the things he does, and people then begin to question why and who, and they're suspicious, it's part of our fallen human nature, and then he unveils, not only am I the son of man, the son of God, I am one with God. I'm one with God and the Holy Spirit. Now, we would sort that out over centuries yet to come. For our part, we have to ask kind of those first-level questions. When God makes himself present to us, when Jesus makes himself known to us, what is our reaction? Do we hear what he has to say? Do we receive what he has to give? And then only decide, well, we're going to cast stones at him. We don't like some part of what's expected of us in return. And then the next basic question, do we accept when he says he is one with his Father and the Holy Spirit, that they are intermingled and intertwined so complexly that we cannot, we cannot completely separate them? Three persons in one God. Maybe, maybe those are too great a thoughts for these days, but maybe since we have time, since we have moments of reflection and prayer to use, we can focus. How do we accept what Christ offers us? Do we accept it fully? And how do we understand Christ, his Father, and the Holy Spirit, each uniquely active but completely one in our lives each day? Let us now offer prayers of petition for the world around us. For all ministers of the church, may the Lord bless them in their demonstration of Christ's love through good works. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government leaders, may the Holy Spirit guide them in their work and encourage them in policies that recognize the dignity of human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle to meet their daily needs. May God strengthen them with a spirit of fortitude and perseverance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may Christ enter our hearts more deeply as we prepare to enter Holy Week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are ill with the coronavirus and for their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all health care workers, that they may be protected as they are on the front lines fighting against uh, this virus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this morning's Mass, Father Paul's intention, Earl Hirsch family, and for my intention, a special intention for this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our beloved dead, may the Lord grant them eternal rest in the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you sent your only Son to be our Savior in faith and in hope, asking the intercession of St. Monica and St. Eugene. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the gifts we offer in this time of peril. May they become for us by your power a source of healing and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. This bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
with St. Monica and St. Eugene and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My friends, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. As you can, in your heart or in your proximity, offer a sign of peace to one another. God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
As a communion meditation, let us offer an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whose hand we have received the medicine of eternal life, grant that through this sacrament we may glory in the fullness of heavenly healing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please do this day reach out to those homebound, uh, those in need, the elderly, the vulnerable, to support them. Uh, we settle into this, and that could cause us to be a little complacent. This is going to go on for a few more weeks, and so the intention, the intentionality of our actions must be all the stronger. The plan uh, continues to offer the churches open for private prayer. Please respect the, the health requirements, social distancing. Uh, I will be tomorrow out in the parking lot, drive through to uh, hear a confession or two. Uh, if, you, if you wish, uh, you'll see things to keep us far enough apart. And then I think we are going on Sunday to try attempt again uh, another time to help stock some of the food pantries, both parish parking lots from noon to one on Sunday, uh, a food pantry drive. And just follow the instructions of the volunteers. They'll, they'll take care of keeping it safe and simple, as simple as possible. Uh, the, the next podcast of Two Priests in a Podcast, tomorrow. The George Lucas special effects still have to be put in, so you know, all of that. Uh, do make the most of this day. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. O God, protector of all who hope in you, bless your people, keep them safe, defend them, prepare them, that free from sin and safe from the enemy, they may persevere always in your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. pass through raging waters in the sea you shall not drown if you walk amid the burning flame you shall not be